Are about ready? Are ready to go whenever you are, Peter. Yep. All ready on this end. I guess everyone's uh, up. Okay. Let's go. Seven thirty. Mm -hmm. Want me to kick off, Peter? Then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, welcome, everyone, and uh, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Thank you very much for joining us. I'd first like to uh, begin, as is customary in Canada, to acknowledge our Indigenous people and, and recognize that Fleming College sits on the traditional lands of the Michisagi, Anishinaabe, and Mississauga peoples. We offer our gratitude to their care of our earth and our relations. Um, we have a great panel assembled here today to answer your questions as best we can. Our deans, our international team, and people from our missions office, we've got a great team assembled. I think if there's still a, a theme, unfortunately, it's still a, there's still a lot of uncertainty in your home countries, in Canada, in Ontario, at all the colleges in Ontario, there's still a lot of moving parts and a lot of unanswered questions about everything from visas to travel to programs to work permits, et cetera. We're gonna try and answer those questions as best we can today. And I want you to take away two things. One, we wanna keep the dialogue going, we'll stay in touch. And, and keep as the answers of uh, the issues evolve, we want to stay in touch. Everyone has different circumstances and we'll do our best to support you. And secondly, I want you to know that at Fleming, we have a wonderful team of faculty, staff, the deans and, and international student services you'll meet today who will do whatever we can to support your journey. We recognize it's a, a challenging time, but we really appreciate that you're considering Fleming and we want to keep the dialogue open. So we all hope to see you in the future uh, as best we can, or whenever that is. Uh, but in the meantime, stay safe and stay healthy. And with that, I'll turn it over to Peter and the rest of the panel and say thanks once again. Thank you, Drew. Uh, my name is Peter Bondi. I'm actually the Director of International Education here at Fleming College. And we have between 800 and 1,000 participants uh, today. So thank you for joining us. It's actually quite impressive. So what I'm going to do is provide you with a bit of a, an overview of what today's events will, will look like over the next 60 minutes. So we've heard from many of you and uh, we will be addressing your most frequently asked questions. We also have our deans of all the schools here today and they will be chatting with you about their programs. Um, next up is Fleming's most senior admissions officer and she will be talking to you about the questions you've submitted with regards to admissions. Following that will be our, um, our immigration uh, official here, and she will be chatting with you about these very important immigration questions. And our final speaker in that regard uh, will be the manager of International Student Services, Tracy McConnery. And Tracy will be talking to you about non-academic issues, and that's you know, housing, jobs, and of course, the quarantine. So, before we get started, I'll just mention two uh, quick housekeeping issues for you. So we've received quite a lot of questions. And what we're going to try to do is ask or answer as many of them as possible. Um, but I'm going to ask you if your question is not answered immediately, uh, do not resubmit it. What we're going to do is try to answer them today. But if not, uh, we will be providing you with contact information and then getting back to you with your specific question if we didn't address it. So, so let's get started. Uh, the first person to speak today uh, will be our Dean and um, our particular Dean of Trades and Technology, and that is Pam Stoneham. Over to you, Pam. Hello, everyone. It's delightful to have this opportunity to speak with you. Just to let you know what courses will look like in, at Fleming in the coming fall is we will be having most of our programs online for the entire semester. There's a couple programs that 
are very hands-on that we need to have lab time and that will take place in those particular courses if you're interested in plumbing techniques or mechatronics the courses will start face to face after our reading week which is in, at the end of october so november 2nd there will be some lab classes for those two programs however in our wireless information networking program our computer engineering programs and computer science security and investigation everything will be online the types of things that you'll do will have a vpn access to our specialized lab equipment so that you can do it virtually from wherever you are are living so that's a little bit about trades and technology and i'll pass it on to my my colleagues Thank you, Pam. Next to speak will be Tina Surzak. She's the Dean of Environmental and Natural Resource Sciences. Tina. Tina, are you there? Okay, we may oh, have a connection. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. So good morning all, it's a pleasure to have joined us today. Um, my name is Tanya and I'm the Dean at the School of Environmental and Natural Resource Sciences. So just to talk a bit about our plans for the fall, um, all lectures will be delivered online throughout the fall term. And um, similar to other schools, the first seven weeks of the fall semester will be delivered entirely online with the emphasis on the theoretical components of the courses. And after the reading break, each program has a customized approach to the last seven weeks. So some programs will be fully online during the fall term, while others take a hybrid approach with some components in person, either during regular scheduled classes or as compressed hands-on experiences. For example, the advanced water systems operator program will be delivered fully online this fall and some practical lab hours will be deferred and delivered as compressed two-day in-person sessions at the beginning of the winter term. In the Sustainable Agriculture program, the first seven weeks of online course delivery will be followed by a two-week-long hands-on experience delivered in person to teach each student the necessary practical skills. And for the remainder of the term, most courses will stay online in this program, but some lab hours will be delivered in person. So all students in our school will receive a schedule for their classes, but it's a decision of each faculty member how they want to deliver their classes. So some faculty might choose to record lectures, while others might deliver their classes in real time. Mm. Faculty will usually record classes if they choose to deliver in real time, so students who cannot attend the live lectures or labs, they can watch the recording at a later stage and don't miss essential information. And I think this is especially um, important for international students, as the difference in time zones might prevent them from attending live versions. Another benefit of a recorded lecture is that students can review the information multiple times and they can use a recording as a resource. And again, this is particularly helpful if there are language barriers, for example. Faculty are available to assist students and answer questions either through email, drop-in office hours, or scheduled online sessions. They have come up with various creative ways to engage students and create a sense of community in this virtual environment. And um, I just want to address briefly the hands-on components, as some of you might be concerned about the delivery of these practical skills in this new environment. So you have to keep in mind that all our courses and programs have specific learning outcomes that they must achieve. And all faculty have developed the online resources and course activities to ensure that these outcomes are met. So for courses that have practical outdoor and lab activities, we developed um, some for you to engage in that can be completed where you live while maintaining safe physical distancing practices. So some courses will also have activities that are going to be completed on campus during practical learning and assessment sessions. And we are confident that students will achieve the quality of education that they expect um, from our school. And one more key element to address is that the quality of your experience will be your engagement in the honesty of students and faculty. 
So we have activities and sessions at our school within each program and for each course that are designed to introduce you to your faculty and classmates. Mm -hmm. So you will not only acquire new knowledge and skills in your chosen field of study, but also new knowledge and skills in online learning, communication and collaboration. So I hope that we'll be able to welcome you, some of you, to our campus community in the future. Thank you very much, Tanya. I really appreciate that. So do the students. Uh, the next to speak is Molly Weslin. And Molly is the Dean of both the School of Health and Wellness and the Dean of Justice and Community Development. Molly? Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your valuable schedules to join us. And I want to thank you for your interest in my two schools. So the schools of health and wellness and justice and community development have a long history in providing high quality education in a large array of programs. These careers have never been more important than during this global pandemic. I am confident that with your Fleming College education, you will be well positioned to become highly skilled practitioners purposefully trained to assist in our recovery. Our delivery structure will look a little different this year. Our highly skilled faculty, like many schools, have been reviewing and revitalizing all of their curricula. They are working to find the most efficient and effective and creative ways to deliver all of their content to ensure that the learning outcomes are met. We as well will be supporting learners in alternate formats while ensuring that program outcomes are creative and exciting and engaging. Our justice programs, for instance, will encourage a strong synchronous um, environment, which means that the, um, the courses will be provided in real time. And as Tanya said, most of them will be, um, will be taped for potentially different time zone use um, so that you can also go back and re, um, look at them later. These regular scheduled activities um, will provide a sense of community for students both in healthcare practitioners and community development folk, that sense of community and ability to network with others is a highly important skill and will be developed by many of these activities. Quality is a very important part of all of our programs. And in fact, most of the health programs, in fact, have been accredited by external uh, bodies. So, for example, our health information management program is accredited by CHIMA, the Canadian Health Information Management Association. And this is a very um, important award that allows for these students to write the Canadian Health Information Management uh, graduate um, exam, allowing certification in Canada. Um, in the past, some of our graduates have had the highest rates on this exam. So we are very proud of the, um, the different programs that we have available in both of the schools and look forward to you coming in the fall. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, the next to speak, uh, our, lean of, uh, our list of deans today is Dr. Mushabar Chaudhry. He is the Dean of the School of Business. Uh, Mushabar, on to you. Hello, namaste, salam alaikum, ni hao, jin shao, das buche, and Anion um, SEO. As Pia said, I'm the Dean of Business. At this club business, we offer a wide range of graduate certificate programs. Uh, I would encourage you to check the website. It's fleming.ca uh, slash school slash business. So you'll find we have programs such as accounting, business, human resources, business administration, global business management, hospitality programs, international business, project management, exporting goods, supply chain management, tourism, and so on. So I would really encourage you to uh, check out this website if you're a new student. Uh, we are a member of uh, Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, also known as ACSB International, uh, which is the leading accreditation body for global business programs. We also recently received accreditation candidacy from the Accreditation Council of Business Schools and Programs, also known as ACBSP, for all of our diploma and graduate certificate programs. Now, even during this time of multitude of crisis, regardless of where you are located, uh, we at uh, Isla Business continue to emphasize on quality and job readiness for all of our programs. In regards to particularly the fall program delivery, we will be delivering all of our program 100% online 
in an asynchronous format. Now, having said that, we'll also offer optional synchronous activities for better student life or digital life uh, experience. Uh, for instance, there would be a case discussion, uh, pro applied projects, uh, seminars, and they will be recorded and they will be posted on your learning management system. Now, although online, our curriculum and activities will foster uh, engagement among your peers, regardless where you are located. You can be in India uh, or Kerala or uh, Punjab or uh, in Vietnam or South Korea or even in Toronto. So regardless where you are located, we will make sure that you will be part of, you will experience that uh, uh, digital life experience. Now, in regards to support from faculty and staff, now apart from a scheduled synchronous office hours, our faculty, uh, uh, your professors are always excited to provide support to your individual requirements, even in this remote learning environment. Now, I understand uh, this might be a different experience than your previous semesters, but uh, trust me, your professors have done tremendous job in planning and developing your semester in a way that is easily accessible without compromising quality and student experience. At this club business, we care about job readiness. This is one of the uh, key focus of my deanship. And our academic activities are currently aligned with the industry requirements and our professors will prepare you to be successful in the current job market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Murshavar. I just want to uh, clarify that, uh, as you said in the other deans, programs are being offered online this fall. As for the winter, that uh, that is a future issue we'll discuss in, in time. So the final um, dean to speak this morning is Dr. Angela Stukador, and she's the dean of the Halliburton School of Art and Design, and also the School of Art and Sciences. Angela, good morning, everyone, and welcome. This is a wonderful opportunity and a great um, example of how Fleming uh, College has engaged across the globe uh, with its students, faculty, and staff, bringing together a community and a culture of learning. In the Halliburton School of Art and Design, we have over 50 years of teaching art and design. We're very proud of our school that is nestled in the woods of a small town in Northern Ontario called Halliburton, Ontario. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot and a wonderful place to foster uh, arts, craft and design. So in that school, we have three programs that are running, integrated design, visual and creative arts and drawing and painting. Each of these programs will be offered for the first seven weeks online with materials provided for the students to work in their home spaces and practice their art and design um, techniques and knowledge and skills under the mentorship of the best of artists, practitioners and teachers that have honed their skills both as artists but also as educators. And that is, I think, one of the features of Fleming is really creative out of the box thinking and um, faculty members who problem solve and rise to the occasion, whatever the situation might present itself. We are, as my colleagues have uh, explained, we have spent a lot of time and energy invested in learning the best ways to provide asynchronous and synchronous on uh, online learning for the first half of the fall term. We also have uh, um, programs in museum management, graphic design, and um, heritage and conservation at the Peterborough campus. All of these three programs are similarly structured in terms of seven weeks of online delivery followed by seven weeks of face-to-face -face or hybrid learning. I think it's important as uh, international students to recognize the great opportunity of engaging in education that is grounded in a Canadian um, cultural 
richness in, in terms of our multicultural background, our commitment to diversity and inclusion. So I know that the, the, the decision to study abroad is, is a complicated one, but I assure you, as my colleagues have, that we are a very welcoming community and the support, guidance, mentorship, and quality of education um, will be a, a, a guaranteed set of values that you will walk away from and remember for the rest of your life. Education is a journey. So we hope that you choose Fleming as part of your journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. And for our participants, uh, we're now going to move on to the next section of the town hall. And that's where we're going to be addressed the, the questions that you've submitted. And I just want to emphasize, maybe repeat, um, that the questions that we're going to be addressing are both for new and returning students. So the next section uh, begins with, we will talk to you about the questions you've submitted concerning admissions. So the next speaker is Katrina, Katrina Krushank, and she's the senior admissions officer in our registrar's office. Over to you, Katrina. Thanks, Peter. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm, my name is Katrina Cruikshank, International Admissions Officer. Um, so a lot of my questions are regarding uh, payment deadlines, drop deadlines, refunds, um, and things like that. So I would strongly encourage students to follow their fee deadlines that are on their offer letters. If you are a semester one student and uh, you request a, a fee extension, please email international admissions at internationaladmissions at flemingcollege.ca. We will do our best to work with you. Um, our drop deadlines are pretty much the same as they always have been. Students have until the 10th day of classes to withdraw from Fleming. Um, we, will be we will need um, documentation and things like that from you, but if you contact us, we will certainly uh, be in touch um, with the follow-up steps. As of now, fees are not reduced for international students. Um, Fleming College is focused on providing the same level of teaching and support to students online as provided face-to-face, -face, including access to faculty, learning supports, and counseling services. We are working to ensure that all students will achieve the same learning in outcomes for each program. With this in mind, there will not be a tu tuition fee reduction. Um, that being said, um, I do know that they are looking at auxiliary fees, things like bus passes, things like that. Uh, more information will come um, as we move closer to September. For those students who are concerned about a delay in obtaining documents from the High Commission, as of now, students must have uh, their study permit or their visa approval letters to register for online study in September. If you have any questions, please give us a, an email at internationaladmissions at flemingcollege.ca. Um, the registration process for September hasn't been finalized yet. We're not exactly sure what that will look like. Certainly more information will be coming out um, as we move closer to September. Um, so definitely keep an eye on your email and we will keep you posted as information is released. I believe I've answered all the questions. Again, if anybody has any questions, please do give us an email at internationaladmissions at flemingcollege.ca and we will answer as promptly as possible. Have a great day. Thank you very much, Katrina. Um, so the next to speak today Actually, is... Peter, we have yes. a question about scholarships, uh, whether the college provides scholarships. Sure, I'd be happy to talk about that. Um, so what I should probably do is I'll mention that we have uh, merit-based scholarships for students who have come to Fleming College and receive a certain GPA. Uh, that information is on our website. And the school also has a, an entrance scholarship. Again, that's on our website. Um, can, we also have bursaries available to international students. So both scholarships and bursaries are available. Um, and the details, again, are on the website, but if this particular student or students who is asking this question, uh, we will send them back uh, detailed information. It's very important. 
So um, we will next move on to questions which, which concern immigration. And this morning, today, we have with us Carmela Velez. She is a regulated Canadian immigration consultant, and she will be addressing the many, many questions that have, have come to Fleming College with regards to immigration that obviously pertains to studies this uh, particular summer and the fall. Carmela? Thanks, Peter. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Carmela Valles, and as Peter said, I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant, and I am based in Peterborough. Um, I'd like to do a special shout out to students from the Philippines who maybe are, I think, are online. Magandang gabi, mahim gabi. So uh, welcome, and I should so I think mention that I came to Peterborough as an international student. So I'm very excited to see you. Uh, here in Peterborough and see you at Fleming, hopefully soon. Okay, now to uh, uh, immigration related uh, questions. Um, I thought to highlight the top questions that international students are currently asking. Um, these are in reference to uh, Immigration Refugee Canada, uh, Citizenship Canada or IRCC updates on what is going to happen in fall 2020. Um, the other issue is how online courses uh, Effect eligibility for the graduation work permit, and if students already in Canada work while their courses are suspended due to COVID-19. So please note that the information shared are temporary measures introduced by IRCC to address concerns and challenges as a result of COVID-19. So uh, what is possible for the September intake? IRCC announced that students who are scheduled to start or go back to school in September are in their home countries and do their semester online. This announcement only applies to the fall 2020 term. Students are allowed to complete up to 50% of their program while outside Canada if they cannot travel to Canada sooner. If your in-class courses are being moved to an online-only format because of COVID-19, you are still eligible for the post-graduation work permit program. This applies to both new and returning students. If you started full-time in the winter term, meaning last January 2020, and later had to become a part-time student, take a break in studies because your courses are suspended due to COVID-19, you are allowed to work. At this time, the applicable period is between May to August 2020. If this period is a scheduled break in your program, you can work, can work full time. If this period is suspended, you're allowed to work 20 hours per week unless you are working in essential services at which you can work full time. This is in effect until August 31st. So I think those are all the main updates. Thank you very much, Carmela. Uh, the next on our agenda today is Tracy McConnery. In case Tracy is actually the manager of International Student Services here at Fleming College in Peterborough. And Tracy is going to talk about some of the non academic questions that you posed to us. Uh, this regards uh, housing, jobs, and the issue of quarantine. Tracy, over to you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, first of all, I will start with the questions that we've been receiving about quarantine. Uh, we understand that even though you will be studying online at the start of the fall semester, many of you might want to travel to Canada early in order to get settled here um, and to start your lives here. However, information about quarantine and self-isolation requirements is evolving very quickly, and we are paying close attention to updates from IRCC. We expect an update in the coming days as to what the specific requirements will be. Until we have clear communication from IRCC on the requirements for travel and for quarantine and self-isolation, we really recommend that you don't make your travel plans just yet. We will continue to update our international student FAQ page on the most recent information for you when it comes to traveling and your quarantine and your self-isolation. But we want you to know that no matter what the requirements, our international team and Housing Services Department will be able to assist you to ensure that you have a plan in place that follows government policy and meets all public health guidelines. Also, when you're thinking about finding permanent housing, we want you to know that we have a wonderful housing services department. They're available to assist you with your housing search and also with navigating things like tenant rights and responsibilities. 
So we're going to be sending you out a tip sheet at the end of the session or later this week with all of the different websites of all of our services and all of our supports. When you see the housing services website, you will see that there are many, many links where you can start your housing search from your home country um, and connect with us anytime. We've also had some questions about employment. We know that students are anxious to um, get to Canada and hit the ground running and, and find that part-time job. Um, so we want you to know that we have a career services team that's ready and willing to help you with this. Um, if you look at their uh, website, you'll find that there's lots of information on job searches, cover letters, resumes, um, also interview practice and how to hone those interview skills. Um, so please feel free to check out their website, but also you can connect with a career services advisor from your home country, um, connect with one of our advisors and get that support right now, because um, it's never too early to start on your cover letter and resume and get them how you want to be before you come to Canada. Um, we've also had some questions about how do I know what services are available to me virtually? So we have so many services that are available to you. Um, and we want you to know that all of those services are listed on our COVID-19 FAQ page under the student tab. Um, but just some examples of virtual services that are being offered while you study. Um, some examples are international student services, of course, career services, health services, counseling, tutoring and academic skills, the library, the bookstore, housing, um, and tutoring and academic skills. So we'll send you a list of all those services, but please know they're also on our website with instructions of how to access them virtually. Finally, who do you contact if you have more questions and if you need more information? Well, first of all, you can always contact us at international at flamingcollege.ca. Second of all, we have a virtual chat room for those of you who don't know. It's open every day from 8.30 until 4. Um, Canadian time, of course, our time in Peterborough and Lindsay. Um, so feel free to join our virtual chat room. The instructions are online um, on the FAQ page um, and you can meet directly with an international student advisor um, and get that real time support for any questions that you have. We may even refer you to Carmela, our regulated Canadian immigration consultant, if you have those complex um, immigration questions that you would like help with. Um, current students, as you know, we send out our weekly newsletter with all of the information and updates that we want you to know new students in the next couple of weeks you're going to get an email from international student services and we're going to ask you to join our weekly bulletins uh, the bulletins are sent to you via email and they will have very important information on things like quarantine and self-isolation traveling to canada what you need to know for studies at fleming college so please sign up for our bulletins um, and get ready to receive lots of information Finally, I also just want to make a quick note that we're planning a very robust virtual orientation for you, which will take place in mid-August. You'll be getting an invitation to join our invitation or to join our orientation for all of you new students. Topics will include such things as immigration 101, housing, finding a part-time job, obtaining your social ins insurance number so you can work in Canada, um, Canadian culture and classroom expectations, et cetera. So uh, we're here to support you on every step of your journey. Uh, please connect with us anytime for support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy. Um, I just want to remind the, uh, the participants today that what we did was we looked at your FAQs and then, and then we had officials, obviously the deans, I wanted you to, to meet all the deans here at Fleming College, but then um, actually have presentations with regards to obviously admissions and immigration and now Tracy most recently with our international student services. But, but this is an interactive session. And what we wanna do is now go live in a true sense and start answering some of the questions that are coming in uh, over the internet and give you direct answers. And um, what I'll do is I'll now turn it over to the moderator of today's event. And she will introduce those particular questions that have come in just now. And those questions will be answered by the experts on the panel today. Over to you. That's great, thank you, Peter. 
Hello, everyone. I'm, my name is Laura, and I've been monitoring the chat. So I have some questions here that I will ask our panelists, and I will ask the questions are being answered. I'm going to continue to monitor the chat for more questions. So the very first one, I'm hoping that perhaps our deans can help us answer these questions. How will students work, uh, study online and get their textbooks? So over to you, Pam and Musabir. So how will students be able to get where it be course packs? How will they get textbooks when they're in their home country studying online? So, hi, this is Pam from Dean, uh, sorry, Dean of Trades and Technology. We are working with our publishers for e-versions of the textbooks so that they're, they um, do not need the, the physical copy and creating those options where possible. If for some reason it's only in a, a physical form, then it would have to be shipped to their home location. Anything to add, Musabir? Yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, School of Business, uh, we will make sure all our textbooks will be available online, uh, even in uh, also other uh, support resources that will be available via D2L, which is the learning management system we use at Fleming. And we also working very hard to uh, find resources that can be only shared in a digital format. So as uh, uh, Dean, uh, Pam mentioned that it is uh, it will not gonna use any um, uh, physical textbook, so it will be only everything gonna be accessible via online or in the digital format. Is that the same for the programs in your schools, Tanya and Molly, as well as Angela? It's Molly, um, and I, as you may remember, I'm the Dean of the Schools of Health and Wellness and Justice and Community Development. And in fact, um, our schools, we do have a mixture of um, text material, which would be available by ordering through our bookstore and can be shipped. We also um, are attempting to find as many uh, what's called open educational resources. And these are resources that are available online for folks to use. Um, and as well, we do have some available um, electronic resources for purchase. Um, so we have a variety available. Thank you, Molly. Anything that you would like to add, Tanya? Um, no, it's uh, Tanya here for the School of Environmental and Natural Resource Sciences. And for us, the same applies um, as the other schools, basically what Molly just said. So we have various resources available, trying to keep most of it online. Great, thank you. And while I have you right in front of us, Tanya, there's a question specific for you, please, regarding sustainable waste management program. Is it going to be all online for the fall for that particular program? This program won't be offered this fall. Okay, thank you. The next question, Katrina, I'm wondering if you could help us answer the next question. What are the possibilities and perhaps implications of deferring from the fall semester to other upcoming intakes? Um, there, there's definitely a possibility. We are opening January, I'm hoping in the next couple days. I've been really pushing for it. Um, so absolutely, if a student would like to defer from September to January, um, they or their agent can request that deferral through OCAS and uh, we will process it as long as there's space availability. Thank you. We do have a question regarding IELTS. So I'm wondering, Tracy, if you could help me answer that question. If a student has IELTS scores that are valid until the end of September and they need to, uh, at the airport, will the immigration officer ask for IELTS? And then what happens if at the time of travel, the IELTS, score, the IELTS scores are um, outdated? So I will say my understanding here, and then I defer to Carmela um, if she has more advice, but I would say as long as you've been admitted with those IELTS scores that, that it was still valid at the time of admission um, so that you would be okay. But Carmela, do you have anything to add? Yes, um, the IELTS are needed both for uh, to prove um, qualifications for the offer letter from the college and as well for immigration purposes. Um, it's not per se a requirement for travel. So um, uh, students who are traveling with an expired um, IELTS results, and if they are asked, they should be able to articulate, um, you know, uh, that they have already met the criteria 
and that they have been admitted and that they have been approved for a study permit and that's why they're coming in to Canada. Thank you. There's another question perhaps for you Tracy and Carmela. If a student has applied for a study permit but they are in the biometric stage of the process and will do you happen to know what may perhaps what the what are the probabilities or possibilities of them receiving a study permit in time for September? Go ahead, Carmela. Um, at the moment, IRCC is saying that no applications will be refused because of incomplete um, documents, and one of those would be the biometrics requirements. Um, in, I think that will depend on which countries. I've been told yesterday, oh, this is, uh, I have not officially confirmed this, that in India, for example, the biometric collection centers have opened and the visa access centers have opened. So I'm not sure. I have yet to double check that. Um, as far as I know, the Philippines are still closed. Um, so the question if that what will happen if um, the study permit will not be ready for September? I guess they're just concerned that, yes, they're just concerned that the process is delayed. Right. Yeah. So unfortunately, that is a, a reality at the moment. Thank you. And there's another question here about study permits. So if a student has deferred their admission from May to September intake and, the, and they have a visa for one year, can we provide them on information for visa extensions, Tracy, or is that perhaps something that we will support them through once they're here? Yes, that is absolutely something that we will support them through. And feel free to contact us at international at Fleming.ca and we can answer those questions for you right away. Thank you. Another question regarding study permits. Will study permits be extended even if the student stays in their home country for the, for the first semester of study? Yes, um, the study permit extensions um, will be granted per support letter or with a support letter from the college explaining why the program was not finished according to the initial offer letter timeline. Provide the, the reasons for that and then um, if it's anything related because of um, a gap uh, or a disruption or um, a break in the studies because of not being able to travel to Canada or the courses being suspended, then I would think that that should not be a problem. Thank you. Another question, this is for the deans. Perhaps I can start with Musabir. If a student has technical problems at home and they are with connectivity, internet connectivity, what happens if they are unable to submit their assignments on time? Will there be an extension period and will that affect their grades? Well, that's a good question. As I said, all our uh, programs are going to be in asynchronous format. And uh, so in those uh, cases, uh, students have to work uh, closely with the professor and yes, they will uh, receive uh, extension if there is a technical issues or if uh, there is a some uh, for, for some other reason they cannot access the documents but it is uh, programs uh, and courses are designed currently in a way that is a student will be able to do things uh, uh, remotely and uh, so if those are special cases and they have to work closely as a student you have to work closely with your professors for extension and yes those cases professor will uh, you know provide you the extension to submit your assignment would you would you like to add anything to that, Pam? Yes, I think it's a good practice though. We're, we're telling our faculty that in this environment we need to be flexible, but also it's upon it's um it's in your best interest to anticipate that there may not uh things may not happen as smoothly as you want. So I would suggest that you have a plan to submit things in advance so that if anything technical gets in the way, you're not leaving it to the last minute. So this, in this new environment, you might want to start building in those practices to anticipate obstacles that may, may come up. But we are trying to make this environment as flexible as possible. But I believe it was Tanya that um, stressed the point that we are an outcome-based program, all of us, and so we need to dem we need you to demonstrate that you've learned the learning outcomes. Tanya or Molly, would you like or Angela, would you like to add anything to to the question about technical issues? 
Um, it's, it's Tanya here. I think I really have to emphasize one more time Pam's point, and that is to uh, like there's some responsibility as well on the students to try to work ahead and plan ahead and not leave um, submissions to the last minute. But in cases where there are technical issues, students should contact their faculty in time as well and advise them of these issues. And then this will be um, considered on an individual basis, how we can um, basically move forward um, and how these assignments can be submitted. And I, I too would agree that it's a mixture. Certainly, it is a, certainly the student's responsibility. Um, so, for example, in the School of Justice and Community Development, the programs that um, are part of the common first semester, they um, have a study skills and success uh, course. And what it does is it supports the students to learn those study skills and time management skills necessary to help them succeed. So not only do we have um, the ability to support our students, but there are a variety of other resources available at the college virtually uh, to support you uh, through our tutoring services, et cetera, to help with time management, study skills, et cetera. Thank you. Okay. I'm just wondering if it would be possible, please. I'm going to go through each dean again. There's a in the chat regarding what programs are all online, what programs are half and half. So just for clarity of her audience, I'm just wondering if I I'm going to start in uh, no preferential order and asking each dean to please just clarify briefly again our programs in your school all online or is it going to be a, co a hybrid com combination of delivery so i'm going to start with you tanya please and just clarify one more time uh, the delivery format for the fall and i also want to make this clear we're only speaking about the fall semester at this point it is my understanding that we are hoping to return to in campus uh, oh, sorry on campus in person delivery as soon as it is deemed safe so at this point we can only speak about what the plans are for the upcoming fall 2020 semester so tanya please go ahead and tell us one more time what the delivery for the semester fall 2020 is going to be like in the school of environmental and natural resources the sciences and um, I can't make a generalized statement because it's really program specific that would mean I would have to run here now for every single program which would take quite a bit of time so as I said the first seven weeks of the fall term and that's the same for all programs are going to be delivered online and uh, the back seven weeks after the reading break all lectures are going to stay online but the approach then is program specific. So I know that there's a lot of interest in the advanced water systems operator program, for instance. This program particularly stays fully online in the fall term. And some hands-on components are being deferred to the winter term and are being delivered at the beginning of the winter term as intense hands-on sessions. The Sustainable Agriculture Program, which is another um, program that uh, has a lot of international interest, is moving to hands-on in-person components after the first seven weeks of delivery. So these are, I think, the two main courses. If you're entering into one of our diploma programs, say um, ecosystem management, environmental technology, forestry technician, fish and wildlife, these co programs are all part of our common first semester. The common first semester is online as well in the first seven weeks. After the first seven weeks, the courses stay online, but there will be some intense hands-on sessions in the back seven weeks of the fall term, um, a total of five days that students have hands-on experiences. If for international students, these hands on days be attended, we can offer makeup sessions then in the winter. Thank you. I'm going to turn over to you, Molly. Could you please let us know what the format deli or delivery format is? First of all, for the School of Health and Wellness. So those would be programs that like esthetician, personal support worker. Could you tell us how those are going to be delivered? So certainly, um, as Tanya had indicated as well, it is a mixture. 
And um, it really depends on the program and the level of practical ap um, application that's required to integrate with the learning. So, um, aside from running program by program, um, it, it's quite difficult to answer. But just like Tanya said, our front half will be entirely online with some programs moving to some face to face components, um, like a lab activity in the back half. So, um, for example, nursing, which is a, a or nursing and personal support worker, those programs will be entirely other lectures online, but as Tanya said, have some condensed activities potentially later in the winter. Sorry, later in the fall semester. Thank you. And for programs in the School of Justice and Community Development, so those will be programs like biotechnology, custom border services, how are those being delivered? So, once again, we're trying desperately to um, have all of them online for as much as possible and believe in biotechnology that we have moved the labs to the second semester into the winter. So, right now, it's looking like it'll be all online for first semester. For the fall semester. Thank you. Yes. Musabir, over to you. Could you please confirm program delivery for your school? So, those are all programs in the School of Business. So, those will be project management. Inter uh, international business. Could you please confirm program delivery for fall yes. only? So uh, for the upcoming fall semester, all business program going to be online and will deliver in an asynchronous format for the entire semester for the all 14 weeks. Thank you. Pam, could you speak about programs in the School of Skill Trades and Technology, in particular WIN, Wireless Information Networking? Yes, the wireless information networking will be online for the entire semester, as well as computer engineering, computer science and investigation will also be online for the whole semester. In our culinary management, culinary skills online for the whole semester, the only two programs that are starting have new intakes for the fall that are the, the online for the first seven weeks are mechatronics and plumbing techniques with the hands-on portion. So the theory part, like um, other schools, will remain online, but the hands-on labs will be face-to-face -face in the last seven weeks of the first semester. Thank you, Pam. And over to you, Angela, to tell us about the School of Halliburton School of the Arts. So, in the Halliburton School of the Arts, all of the programs, all six programs that are running will be seven weeks online. And then the back half, the seven weeks will be uh, a mix of online lectures and uh, face to face or uh, combinations of face to face and um, online. Um, I should also mention in general arts and sciences. All the uh, gen ed courses that are requirements and are integrated across all the schools and all the programs, those courses will all be fully online for 14 weeks. Thank you. I have a question for you, Katrina, regarding deferrals. So, if a student is concerned perhaps about not meeting the criteria required for study permits, how, how do they go about deferring their acceptance from the fall semester to other semesters. Okay, so all the student would need to do is them or their agent would just log into their OCAST profile and um, they would need to withdraw their current application and then request a deferral. If they're having any trouble, just email international admissions at FlemingCollege.ca and we would definitely help them out. Thank you, Katrina. There's a question here about IELTS again, Tracy and Carmela. I'm just wondering if you could help us answer these questions. So a student had booked an IELTS test for the end of March. It was postponed to the end of June and now it's been postponed to mid July. What can the student do at this point? So I would say keep that registration um, so you don't lose your spot in the queue. Um, IELTS, until they will have opened their centers, we'll just keep people uh, or the, the, the students who have booked um, to the next available um, date. So, um, yes, and we 
information will be beyond us in terms of when the actual test can actually happen, um, but keep the booking. Um, and in, as far as what that will mean to their application process, uh, same answer to what happens with biometrics. So their um, study permits will be will continue to be in process until all the requirements are in. Thank you. Uh, there's another question here regarding study permits, and perhaps we could clarify this, Tracy. If the program, if a student's program is delivered online, do, are they still required to have a study permit prior to starting the program, even though it's online from their home country? They are not required to have a study permit if it's online from their home country. So that leads us to the next question. Then what happens if a student completes semester one of a program and then they are unfortunately denied a study permit when they intend to travel to Canada? What happens then? So that is definitely a risk of, of starting your studies without a study permit because there is no guarantee um, that you will be able to acquire a study permit. We expect that you will um, and we know that processing has been delayed and that IRCC is working on speeding things up, but um, there is definitely that risk that you would take if you start online without a study permit. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Carmela. For sure, um, that is risk and um, something that, um, I mean, my recommendation would be that um, all uh, studies done online or outside of Canada, especially if it's toward completing a program, are done in the context of a study, of a valid study permit. Um, I know there is a bit of um, some confusion because, of course, um, the regular regulation is that someone who is doing online and are doing it abroad or outside of Canada, there's no study permit um, requirement. But when this temporary measure of online courses uh, being allowed um, temporarily to be done outside and online, outside of Canada, then people are confused that, okay, so does that mean we don't need at all anymore the study permit? Um, so. The answer to that is you do need still the study permit, especially if you are talking about just a semester or semester one of, of a uh, multiple semester programs. And um, the other thing that I would also just flag to, to the students is that when it comes to qualifying for the post-graduation work permit, one of the questions there, statutory questions, is have you at any point studied without authorization? And so if you did a semester online uh, outside of Canada without a study permit, then that is still, uh, that would, would come up. So how will that question be answered? Um, so far at this time, we have not, we do not have yet a, a, a clear uh, question, uh, I mean answer, as to how a question can be answered later on. So um, stay on the safe side and uh, be uh, compliant with the study permit conditions and uh, have a valid permit when you're studying online or in and outside of Canada. Thank you. Katrina, perhaps you can help us with this question. A student has received a letter of acceptance to supply chain management for fall intake, but they want to defer to January. And they believe that this program is not offered in January. Can they, can they apply for another intake with the same deposit that they've paid? You're right, supply chain management is not offered at this time for January. Um, we typically don't, I'm sorry, this is a bit of a loaded question. We typically don't. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we typically don't do deferral, say, from uh, this September to next September. Um, supply chain management is offered in May, so um, there is a chance that they could apply for the May. If it was um, due to the pandemic reasons, I'm, sh I'm sure that we would be able to work with the student and um, do our best. So I would ask the student to reach out to international admissions and we can work one on one. Absolutely. Just to confirm anybody that is perhaps considering deferring, whether it's for financial reasons or travel reasons, the best the best uh, way to proceed is to contact international admissions at flamingcollege.ca. Is that correct, Katrina? That's correct. Absolutely. Yeah. And we can definitely steer them in the right direction from there. Thank you. There was a question about uh, Molly. Perhaps this is a question for you. Uh, there was um, somebody was inquiring about switching their program 
from personal support worker to practical nursing? So um, certainly that would be something that you would have to speak to admissions about in terms of getting a uh, form to sign to change your programs. Um, I'm not quite sure what the connotation would be. There is not a lot of, um, we'll call it advanced standing between personal support and, pers and um, practical nursing. We do have a con ed uh, version for um, once you are a personal support worker, you can take the con ed uh, bridging program from personal support to practical nursing and it allows you entry into the second semester. So it is something that you would have to speak with your coordinator about to see about any transfer credits, but um, it would be certainly something you would have to go through um, admissions about. Thank you. And there are some questions here about ancillary fees that I wanted to clarify. There are certain ancillary fees that are not being charged to students right now, especially the fitness ancillary fee because both our gym facilities uh, are on campus and currently not accessible. So there are discussions from the student unions, both at our Frost campus in Lindsay, as well as our Sutherland campus in Peterborough for students to have access to the Peterborough Sports and Wellness Center or the Lindsay Recreation Complex if they wanted to at a student rate, but you are currently not charged those ancillary fees. There is one last question here for you, Carmela, from a, a returning student, a returning international student. They are wondering if they can work at a factory full, on a full-time basis until August 31st, as they have completed their first year of studies and they're currently in Canada. Okay, full-time work until August 31st. Yes, if um, this is an essential, uh, job. Um, yes, if after finishing uh, the one year program, I'm not sure if the student is going back in September. Um, they say they're going they back. Did, they, no? they didn't make they that finished. clear. They didn't make okay. clear. They just said they completed first year of study. Okay, and if that completion of first year studies is the final studies, then yes, a student who has completed their program and work full time until they receive the completion of studies letter, at which time they should stop working and can continue working full time the moment that they have applied for their post graduation work permit. Okay, thank you. One question here for you, Katrina if a, is there an, an internal pathway? for students who are studying project management and then they wish to go into international business management? Um, there is a informal pathway for our project management students that do not have a uh, degree in business. Um, right now, they need to have a GPA of 3.0 and um, no academic integrity issues. Thank you. So, so just to just sort of to recap for everyone that is for all our guests that are watching this online right now, and correct me if I'm mistaking, uh, Dean, question the best person to speak to is your program coordinator, and their name and email address is posted on our individual web, web page for each program at the college. So if you go to flemingcollege.ca, then you go to full-time programs A to Z, and then you will see a list of all programs at Fleming, find your program, click on it, and on the right-hand side, you will see your program coordinator's name and their email address. So if you have specific questions about curriculum, how the program is gonna be uh, delivered, all those things, you can your, your coordinator is your first point of contact. If you have questions about deferring or program change, then that is uh, international admissions at flemingcollege.ca. Did I miss anything, Deans? I will take that as a no. <laughs> so I believe we pretty much covered most or all the sort of the uh, the trends in the chat and I will pass it back over to Peter for closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. I just want to make a note to all attendees that we will be sending you a link of this recorded conversation this morning. 
And we're also going to be sending you an email with specific contact information, resource information that you can then reach out if your question has not been uh, answered this morning. So the final, final remarks, of course, is to thank the panelists for joining us today. Uh, we had all the deans at Fleming College participate today. And as I mentioned, 800 to 1,000 international students, both new and returning. So I, uh, I'll just stop by saying um, stay safe, and I hope to see you here in Peterborough very soon. Bye.